let me talk a little bit about the equality in Islamic civilization. The equality in Islamic civilization is something that can be spoken of really at length. But one of the things that I want to say is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. So in reality, the only measure that we have, the only index we have to know who is the greater human being is the person who has more piety. We don't look at the colors, we don't look at all of these things. In fact, the only thing that we really look at is the piety of a person. And that's why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, nasu min Adam. People are from Adam alayhi salam. Wa Adamu min turab. And Adam alayhi salam happens to be from what? He happens to be from dirt. La fadla li arabiyin ala ajami. There is no favor, there is no grace, there is no virtue for a person who happens to be an Arab over a non Arab. There is no virtue for a person who happens to be white over a black person or vice versa, except by taqwa. Okay? Now, black people in the time before Rasulullah were in fact people who were not given their rights, at least in Arabia. Okay? And that's why some of the companions, even when they came, they came from a, a slightly racist culture. So those tendencies took a while for them to be ejected out of their system, right? So, and the reason why I say this is because the Prophet ﷺ was able to successfully get rid of the system that just a few years after the death of Rasulullah actually even within the life of Rasulullah, you had Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu giving the adhan, right? And just a few years after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu a man by the name of Ata ibn Abi Rabah emerged, okay? Ata was an Abyssinian slave who was freed. He was black. He was one-eyed. He was a person that was snub-nosed, okay? He was partially paralyzed as well. He was crippled. So he is coming from a very, very difficult background. All of the different social stigma is attached to him, right? And later on in his life, he even became blind as well. This man didn't have too much money, so he remained in the masjid for 20 years. This man had one of his arms cut off during the time <coughs> in which Al-Hajjad had attacked Ibn Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Mecca. This man, however, was a man who was the mufti of Mecca. The mufti of Mecca. Imagine someone like that, so in our society is looked at as a vulnerable person, someone who there's a lot of stigma attached to him. Imagine someone like that becoming the mufti of the haram. Imagine when all of the hujjaj from across the world come, there's a caller that calls out and he says, and he announces at the top of his lungs, no one should give fatwa to the people except for Ata ibn Abi Rabah. Imagine that. Imagine that Ibn Abbas, he would say, O oh people of Mecca, you are gathering around me and you have Ata. This is Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Imagine that. This is Ata, a person that was apparently, apparently someone that would come from a low, lower class, right? Based on the Arab norms. And I will, I will say also based on a lot of social norms, bad social norms in the, in the world today as well, right? Now let's compare that to 20th century United States of America. Okay, and the reason why I'm drawing this comparison is not specifically to attack a specific country, but because we know the epitome of modern civilization happens to be rising from there, right? So we're comparing a very early advent of Islam to something that is a very late portion of civilization. Black schools were separate from white schools. Black textbooks were different from white textbooks. Why? Because you have to feed a different mess identity to each person so they understand whatever they want you know, people to understand, right? Black people couldn't w marry white people, white people couldn't marry black people. This is all in the 1950s, 60s, and uh, things have changed, but not fully changed till today. And this is the reason why I said that when the colonialists came, a number of different ills came along with them as well. Racism was one of them. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had erad eradicated racism from the Muslim Ummah, okay? Black cabins were separate on trains and white cabins were separate on trains. Look at this, in 1947, 
a dog burial service, stopped accepting dogs which were owned by black people. Why? Because the white dog owners, they said that our dogs will die and rest with dogs of black people? Really? This is how bad, this is a reality. This is what the, see, and I've met people from that phase. I've met the, the, the bodyguard of Malcolm X. And the stories that you hear, the Malcolm X is the person who, you know, brought a, a, a real rise to the black rights movements, right? And he was Muslim. So the idea is that these ideas, they're not just in books. This was something that people were living through. These were realities.